It's time to start our Sunday morning service. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Let's start it off on the right foot. Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, God, we just come before you at this time. Hey, God, we know it's cold outside, but God, it's warm on the inside with the power of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Hey, God, we just ask it and praise your holy name. And we ask, God, that you would bless and move with that power and that Spirit this morning. God, touch each and every one of us deep down in our soul. God, if they need a healing this morning, we just ask for that healing. If they need a deliverance this morning, God, we just ask and we pray for that deliverance. God, if there's a financial need this morning, we just ask that you meet and bless that financial need. And God, we're just careful this morning to give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Remain standing. Let's grab a hymn note turn to page 459 and sing that song, I'm Anchored in Jesus, page 459. and worship this morning. If you have a need and if you have a desire, just throw those hands up and bring that through the throne room of grace. Say, God, I need this blessing in my life. Say, God, I need this deliverance in my life. God, I need to be closer to you. God, I need the power of the Holy Ghost. 
working on the inside. God, we know that you're here to deliver and to save. God, you're already here in this church building. Continue to bless and continue to move. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap for Amen and amen. You may be seated. It is truly good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to see Sister Janice here this morning. Welcome, Sister. You've been missed. Amen. Been wondering where you're at, and it's good to have you back into the family. Amen. Amen. We really had a good time last night. We really had it. The pastor even went out and went and got more chicken. Amen. It was good to be in the house of the family of God. Something really happened that was a really big blessing that I'm going to share with you. Sister Tiffany, again, <laughs> again. We was getting ready, we was cleaning up last night, putting everything away, and I walked up to Sister and hugged her a little bit because I knew that she had set things up, and I knew that helped set things up. And I said, thank you. And as Sister was walking away, she said something like, it's the family. Yeah, you remember that, Sister? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do because it stuck out. You know, we get up here and we, and we exhort. And we really enjoy doing that. We really enjoy talking about the family of God. We really enjoy talking about each and every one of you. And we always say, what do I say? The family that prays together. And when Sister said that, I was like, yeah. Yeah, That's the key. yeah. the key. Sister Walls just said it's the key. The family of God, it's always a blessing. No matter where we're at or what's going on, to be a part of that family. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. sir, don't be... Uh, be mindful. Don't be forgetting. Also, the service is coming up tonight at 630. And then Bible study on Tuesday, diving deep. Oh, yeah. Diving deep. Bible study is always good. No matter what it is, we're diving deep, finding out exactly what the will of God is for our lives. Sometimes we have that famous question, why am I alive? Why am I here? And when we come to Bible study and we come to church, we learn the word of God. We learn why we are here. And when we pray, we realize that we understand why I'm alive yeah. and what God wants us to do in our lives. Amen. Yeah. And we also have in-home Bible studies. We want to be mindful of that and remember those things. In-home Bible studies are available Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings. Call to schedule yours today. Pastor Wall, 608-622-1920. And I remember the last time I was in, we was over to Sister Janice's place, and that was a really big blessing. Amen. We were over to her place, and she was in... I don't know, I guess it was like a condo or something like that, or a lot of apartments. And when we were on the very top, and we could look out, and we could see, I think it was Monona Bay, wasn't it, sister? Yeah. I was like, wow, this is really nice up here, eh? Amen. God knows how to take care of his people, amen. amen. But at this time, we're going to receive the Sunday morning tithing offering. His brother would come. We're going to remember, all Christians pay tithe and give offerings unto the Lord. Amen? Amen. amen. Brother, if you please pray. Dear Father, we're thankful to be in your house of prayer today. Many blessings. We ask you both to bless the gift of the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
<laughs> it's okay. It happens. You know, you know, by trade, you know, uh, it's not lighthearted, but trade, by trade, we're a mechanic. And you would be surprised on the mechanic field on how many accidents and things that happen. I have seen literally thousands and thousands of dollars go up in smoke like this. And one day we saw about $35,000 just gone. And we, we accident, what really happened is uh, I asked if I could move a truck. And the mechanic told me I could move a truck. And all the bells and whistles on the truck were going off. All the red lights and everything was going off, but the whole dash was in Spanish. I didn't know what was going on. The mechanic had drained the oil out of the motor and didn't tell me. I backed it up and started up, 35000 Wow. Like that. Accidents happen, amen. amen. But we're in the house of the Lord. It's no big deal. We all love each other. The family that prays together stays, stays together. together. Amen. And we love each other. Amen. At this time, the sisters are going to sing a special. And after that, pastor's going to come and minister the word of God. God Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, this year is going to be the goodness of God year, y'all. Y'all know it's sing with us. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held.
the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's lift up our hands this morning. Worship and magnify his holy name this morning. Thank you, Jesus. God, for bringing us back to your house, Lord. To magnify God, to glorify your holy name this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. You may be seated this morning. Amen. It's good to be back here this morning. Amen. did have a great time last night. I thought we were running out of chicken. <laughs> so I went and bought some more. I bought, um, but it was, it was a blessing. Amen. How much chicken was it, preacher? It was a lot. But the Lord always has extra. We were singing that song this morning, um, The Goodness of God. And I was, uh, just had a vision in my mind, kind of like a, a picture in my mind about people running from the Lord. You know, people don't want to come to church, don't want to serve the Lord, and wherever it is now, they, they're running, and God's goodness is trying to catch yes. up to them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, God's trying to be good to you. Yeah. you yeah. You're running away from God. He's trying, the goodness of God is, is running after you. Yes. So I was thinking, like, wow, I, um, what's wrong with the goodness of God? You know, people are trying to get away from God's goodness. Kind of a crazy um, picture to have in your mind or whatever, but that's a, exactly what people are doing. Um, God's trying to be good to them and they're thinking that he wants to be harsh to them or something or think he's a bad um, taskmaster or something. But God is always good to each one of us. It's always good. Pray for those that are on here this morning. Look around, you may see um, someone that's not here this morning that was here last night. Um, pray for them. So man, preachers, pray last night looking around where's everybody praise God you know um, sometimes um, folks um, have to have patience with people right. amen? amen that's what um, the Lord he has patience with all of us yeah. all of us um, I'm going to say something that you may not understand but it's to someone that may be listening and watching this broadcast um, to, the, to the woman that called me uh, last night um, I am not against you. You do what the Lord lays upon your heart, and God um, will bless. And the Bible says that um, the devil is the accuser of the brethren. So uh, we are on your side. Thank you, Lord. So anything, you, know, you say, well, what are you talking about? She know she's listening. What else? Pray for your church. Pray for those um, that are, as we share, that are on here, those that are, as we call, the sick, those that are shut in, um, um, pray for one another by name. Amen. Amen. As we shared earlier, God does not deal in generalities. He deals in specifics. So if you are specific with him, Lord God, I ask that you would pray for, and you tell the Lord their name. Have that picture in your mind, too. Because you say, well, what do you mean that picture in your mind? Because the Lord, he sees what you're thinking. Amen. Sees your heart. Yeah. And have that picture in your mind as you pray for them. And the Lord will take it over from there. Yeah, right. Amen? Yeah, right. So right. the reason I'm sharing that is because um, pray for me, Sister Walls. Yeah, right. What's going on? Y'all breaking up? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's till death do us part. Yeah. So uh, just pray for us, you know. Um, we, uh, we, you know, it's a lot, you know, on our plate. You know, we, um, we help a lot of people. And sometimes um, um, things go on wherever, you know, it's a lot of folks that come to this church and um, um, people have problems. They have problems, things happen in their lives. And, um, you know, when, when it's all said and done, um, the Lord is always trying to help people. Help people. So pray for us that the Lord will continue to give us wisdom to um, do his work. Amen. We're reading out of the book of Jeremiah this morning. Jeremiah chapter 18. 
We miss Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18, we're going to be reading, starting to read in verse 1. Oh, don't forget, uh, in February we do have our uh, uh, relationship uh, class every Friday, the month of February. Every Friday, um, starting at 6, 6.30, we did set a time, but maybe at 6.30. Um, uh, it's for... Um, it's for anyone who wants to be in a relationship that's in a relationship it's not just for uh, uh, married people it's for uh, uh, married single uh, so come come I tell you to share with sister walls that I believe that um we have a we have enough experience to share with individuals what it takes to um, navigate a marriage so come every Friday in February there are uh, will be a uh, Few prizes there, giveaways. That's why you always giving away stuff. It's better to give than receive. Right. Yeah, right. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Amen. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seen good to the potter to make, to make it. I'd like to draw your attention again to that last verse I've just read, Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make to make it. Amen. And with that, I would like to preach on a thought or message titled, The Potter's Hands. The Potter Hands. Brother Najim, could you please pray over the message? Here's a message this morning, please. Amen. Appreciate that prayer. The potter's hands. This morning, our text comes from the book of Jeremiah. One of the longest books in the Bible. This book reveals to us, or for us this morning, critical periods in the life and times of Israel. It's a book filled with divine Revelation, judgments, and prophetic speeches. We see in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 1 through 6, divine justice open to or strengthened by human repentance or response. We see that God can change his mind. It's important to note that throughout the Bible, whether in, whether in Exodus, Jeremiah, um, 
Amos, or Jonah. When God changes his mind, it's always in the favor of humanity. It's always in our favor. That is, God changes his mind from intent to destroy to intent to save. From intent to do harm to intent to do good. From intent from cursing an individual to the intent of blessing the individual. Now, God wants to bless creation. His creation. He created everyone in his image. And I don't believe that there is a God uh, that's in heaven that wants to destroy his creation. He says he's willing for no man to perish. That's not God's intention or intent for men and women to perish. But all, the Bible says, to come to repentance. When God changes his mind, it is always for our good rather than our bad. Amen. It is my intent this morning, like Jeremiah, to leave you with a message of hope and not of doom. Okay? In verse 4 of Jeremiah chapter 18, it said that the vessel in the potter's hand was marred. Okay? That word marred means stained, disfigured, scratched, flawed, or just plain messed up. Now, you got to understand. Now, this vessel is in the hands of the potter. So you say, well, preacher, I'm in the hands of the potter. I'm straight. But the potter reworked it. Or took the shape that it was in and remolded it into another vessel. As seen good to the potter or to him. Now, did God make it like that before? Bible says in Psalm chapter 51 and verse 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. The word iniquity means known sin, wickedness, evil, immorality. And in sin did my mother conceive me. The people that raised all of us, raised us up as best as as they could. Okay? As best as they knew how. Some raised us up in church. Some raised us themselves. Some from people that had a form of godliness. But some actually had a real relationship with the Lord. What I'm saying is that we all make choices. We all make choices. And all the choices we've made in our lives have brought us to the place that we're at this morning. Amen. This morning, if you're sitting in this church this morning, you made the right choice. Amen. Oh, preacher, yeah, you saying that because you're a preacher or what? No. No, it's a lot of people thought about coming to church this morning. A lot of people thought about, well, you know, I know I should come to church. It's a lot of people, as we shared this morning, are running from the goodness of God. And that's one thing I can't understand why they're running from the goodness of God. But we've made the right choice. In Jeremiah chapter 18, these uh, verses gives us some important information. First, the vessel was a work in progress. It's a work in progress. It was not complete. Second, the vessel was in the potter's hand. It was in the potter's hands. Although marred, although disfigured, although scratched, although flawed and messed up, it was still in the potter's hand. And third, it was remade into a vessel that the potter was pleased with. As far as I can see from this verse, it's okay to be marred. Mm -mm. It's okay to be disfigured. It's okay. I'm going to say it now, to be messed up. But if you're still in the potter's hands, 
No. It's the difference between being messed up and whatever this now. You ain't even you ain't even in the potter's hand. But if you come to the potter, <laughs> you come to the potter, you he places you on that wheel and he It's okay to be messed up because you are there in the pot, uh, on the potter's uh, uh, wheel and he's turning you into doing all manners of things, taking off the sharp edges and doing all these things, reforming you, reshaping you to what he sees fit. As I said before, if you're not in, if you, if you are not wanting to be on the potter's wheel, if you are. Then you messed up truly. I'm saying that if your life is messed up, it's okay. If you're discouraged, I'm saying now, it's okay. If you don't know what to do, that's all right. Just as long as you are in the master's hands, it's going to be all right. We all came to church this morning. We said, I got to go to the house of God. I got to make it to God's house. I got to get there. I know something is for me in God's house. I was working at this uh, um, insulation company back in Washington State. When we were in Washington State, and it was, I used to hang insulation in the houses and blow it in the attics. And we had this. We had our conferences coming up twice a year. And as we were there, we uh, we were leaving to go to a conference. Um, uh, all the brothers, was a lot of. Uh, uh, preachers and uh, they were working at this company and we was going to this conference and, um, uh, <laughs> and the brother would say God's got something better for me there at that conference so as we was walking out I heard one uh, person that worked at the place and he made the statement he said I heard one of them say that God has some type of something better for them out there if they only knew God has something better for all of us Hello? He has something good for all of us. His goodness is running after us. Won't we just slow down a little bit so God's goodness can catch up and overtake us? Because I am all for God's goodness. May not like things that's going on. You know, may not like uh, the, uh, uh, as the potter has me on that wheel, may not like those rough edges coming off. But you know something? He's making us to what he wants us Amen. to be. In reading Jeremiah chapter 18, by the time you reach verse 6, it might appear to be a message of doom. But in verse 4, there is a message of hope. Hope for the individual. Hope for the future. Hope for our nation. In this parable, the clay represents Israel and the potter represents God. While it may appear that we are headed for the unknown, there is still time. Yes, amen. It's been shared that as long as we got breath, there's still hope. God has not given up, given up on us. As long as we wake up every morning. As long as, you say, well, I woke up by the alarm. You woke up by, by a direct touch from Almighty God. God touch your heart and, and touch your life to wake up. He fl- your eyelids begin to flutter and you begin to wake up and God and, and the Lord dealt with your heart. You going to church this morning? Are you going to church? Well, you know, God, I got this big hang toe right here, this hang nail. God, I got this big headache right now. Oh Lord, up, I chew up, God, you got the cold. <laughs> All type of excuses. We could make, you know, and I'm not saying some people are legitimately sick. I mean, one time, um, a few weeks ago, I was legitimately sick. And I stayed home. Now, I'm going to say this now. Cut from your regular broadcast. If you're sick, stay home. <laughs> this is a commercial this morning <laughs> from Pastor Walls. A special message from Pastor Walls. Yes, hello, my name is Pastor Walls. If you're sick, stay home. Don't come to church. Pastor, uh, Pastor Sam telling people not to come to church. That's right. Stay home. I don't want what you got. And no one, I believe, everyone here doesn't want it either. So stay home until you get well. Hello? Back to your regular programming. As the potter's wheel continues to turn, there's hope. The potter, the master craftsman, does not 
make flawed things. God don't make junk. Hello? So don't think, no, you have, if you have thoughts in your mind saying, you know, oh yeah, oh, you messed up. Yeah, you may have messed up, but God don't make junk. You're in the right place. You're on the potter's wheel. On the potter's wheel. My wife, she has this sewing machine. And she puts her, her uh, fabric on there and whatever this that, and turns it around or whatever, pulls that thing down on the back. Whoosh, the foot comes down and she hits that button and the, and the, uh, uh, the thread starts going. If she didn't push that button, it'd just be standing in the same place. What are you doing, honey? I'm sewing. Well, you're not pushing the thing on the ground so the sewing, so the, uh, Thing could go fast. Oh, something has to be done. The person that sows, something has to be pushed. You getting that, preacher? Sometimes, most of the time, the potter pushes us. He pushes off things that's in our life. What are you saying, preacher? As my wife pushes that button or that uh, foot down in the sewing begins to go she's making something that's great in order to make something great that needle has to go down and up and then in the uh, thread has to go in and out it's putting everything together same way in the Lord God begins to hit that wheel and stuff beginning to fly boom, boom. he's making us out of a better project yes. some of you may not remember the six million dollar man was a man by the name of Steve Austin it was a play by the actor Lee Majors and when the, when the movie, when it came on y'all we can rebuild him dun 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 so how you know all that? Because I remember in my mind, my mind is like a, a tape recorder. I can remember every movie that I seen. But I said we can rebuild him. You know, he had this accident. Uh, uh, I think it was a uh, uh, he was an astronaut. And he had this accident uh, in the ship or whatever this and that. And he came. And all the things his parts, his arms, arm was messed up. His leg lost his legs and everything. His eye was messed up. And they said we can rebuild him. We can be, do him better. And they put a new. Uh, Eye in him and an arm, put it on two legs and whatever, and you know, he would jump up. He would look in his eye. See, y'all remember that. Y'all remember that. I remember those things. Y'all, y'all gotta be old, you know, like me. Whatever. Some of y'all older people don't know what I'm talking about. But they rebuilt him, they made him a better person. And they would send him out on special assignments and this and that. And people would just think he's a regular person. But as he began to use his new uh, skills, his new bionic, do, 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 he'd jump up, jump over a building, wherever. He'd move stuff with his arm, break all, you know. It's the same way with a Christian's life. God's rebuilding us. He's reworking us. We can rebuild her. We can rebuild him. We can make them better. We can make them uh, the way that I have created them to be. Yet sin in this life, the Bible says we were born and shapen in iniquity. Born in sin uh, and shapen in iniquity. Known sin. Uh, uh, all these things are in our lives. Uh, but when we come to Jesus Christ, he makes us better. Amen. He recreates us. Reinvents us. Remodels us. Hello? That's not my message, but it's free. Don't caution them. The potter plans, and he makes a thing of beauty. Yet, at times, the thing that is made becomes marred. It becomes disfigured. It becomes messed up. But thanks be to God, it's still on the potter's wheel. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 3 through 6, it says, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, 
he wrought. The word wrought means he shaped or formed or created, produced a work on the wheels. The vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter? Said the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine hand, O house of Israel. Hello? So as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. New Testament Christian Church. Hello? Put your name in there. So are you in my hand. Brother Josh, show a read them. Brother Josh, show a read. Get them mixed up sometimes. Put your name in there. We're all in the potter's hand. When the potter noticed, when he noticed with an expert eye and experienced perception that the vessel was marred, he did not reject it and throw it away, but reworked it and remodeled it. God doesn't throw any of us away. We may say, and sometimes people may say, well, you know, uh, I, I, I done messed up in life and some may take their lives. Because they can't see beyond their own eyes and their own self that uh, I can't do it in my own ability, so I, I, I'm just going to kill myself. But we all got to look beyond ourselves. There is someone that reworks us. Someone that takes care of us. Someone that begins to do a lasting work within our hearts and within our lives. It is not I, it is not us, but it is the master, Jesus Christ. The one who begins to come to each one. He always comes to each one of our lives and shares with us. Come unto me. Come unto me all ye that labor in our heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. That thing, that yoke is that what they used to put on a, uh, a, a, a cow neck or a bull's neck. That yoke. He said take my yoke upon you. He said my Yoke is easy. My burden is light. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Though messed up, the vessel still had value for the master. Though marred, the vessel still had hope. Though damaged, the vessel still had importance. That gives all mankind hope. If a person doesn't know Jesus Christ, they are without hope. Because they, uh, in our world, it's all about, hey, do this. You, it's in you. You can do it. You have the ability. You have the strength to do all. You can do it. Yes. And then we get to that, and they get to that point, whatever, and we find out that there's still something missing. Yeah. What is it? It's the creator. Yeah. Something beyond us. Yes, that's right. He's the one that reaches out constantly. We only can go so far in our own ability. We may think that we're messed up. We may think that we're damaged. We may think that we have no hope. But we're still on the potter's wheel. We're still in the potter's hand. He's still reworking us. God has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. If we are yet in the master's hands, if we are yet on the potter's wheel, we still have hope. Don't give up. Don't jump off the potter's wheel. Don't begin to say, no, I don't want to be like this. What type, what type of creation or what type of uh, clay? You're, he's, he's reworking that uh, clay on that wheel right there in the, in the, in the uh, clay of the potter or the pot that's on the potter's wheel. Begin to say, I don't want to be like this. Come on now. I don't want to, I don't want to be like this. As individuals. As a family, as a neighborhood, as a city, as a state, as a nation, we are valuable Amen. to him. Amen. We're valuable to him. Though scratched, scarred, blemished, defaced, and even what may appear as ruined, if we are in the potter's wheel or on his hands, there's still hope for all of us. 
I'm thankful that he has hope in us. He's not giving us up. He's not put us out there. He hasn't given any of us up. I always say pray for one another. Don't give up on anyone. I found out that folks from past, from the past, they're coming back. They're coming back, reaching to God. They're not beginning to run away as we begin to share this morning, but they're beginning to allow the goodness of God to catch up with them. Standing still uh, and beginning to see the salvation of the Lord. Standing still uh, and beginning to see the blessings of Almighty God. We got to stand still sometimes uh, and begin to think in our mind and our heart, Lord, where are you taking me? God, what are you doing with my heart and my life? Uh, and it, all he wants to do is be good to all of us. How do we know if we're on the, how do we know if we are in or on the potter's wheel? How do we know if we're in the potter's hand? First, put down here, if we are to be in the potter's hands, we must take notice of those less fortunate than ourselves. Our thoughts should be his thoughts. Bible says that this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Do our thoughts resemble the thoughts of Jesus Christ? Don't put an excuse in there where, oh, you know, I'm not Jesus. But you know something? If you invited Christ into your heart and your life, he's there working in you. Christ, Bible says, Christ in you. The hope of glory. He works in you. He wants the world to see the world in. He wants the world to see that he is in you. Or do we think of ourselves most of the time? Do we think most of the time of ourselves? What do I want? What do I want, preacher? What I want to do? What's best for me? It's going to come back up again. What's best for me, myself, and I? Did you know that's how a child thinks? A child thinks what's best for them. This is what I want. Ma, I'm hungry. Okay, we're going to get some food. I'm hungry now. It ain't, it ain't like you got to prepare food and all this, and go out and get some or whatever it is that. The child only thinks about themselves or their needs right now. I is in the middle. Did you know I is the middle, is the middle letter in sin? There is no I in team. If you, team is not T-I-E-M. There is no I in Jesus. There is no I in serving the Lord. Jesus thought more about others than he did about himself. Well, preacher, what if I'm going through some, all of us are going through some stuff. Had to go out and buy some new shoes. So what are you buying new shoes for, preacher? Because my other shoes can fit my foot because my foot is still swollen from an accident. What are you saying, preacher? That's right. We all going through something. We all going through something. All of us here, you know, don't you say, "Well, I, I feel great. I'm perfect. I'm." Hungry. Uh, go go home and sit down for a while. You know, you can pick up a newspaper. Oh, my back is sweet. I'm telling you, things can happen just like that. We find ourselves out for work for a few weeks. You say, well, what happened? And you think about, I said to myself that I was straight. And God makes sure that you look to him. There's no I in serving the Lord. Being mindful of others alone is not enough. Many people are mindful, but are they motivated by the instructions of the word of God? Those things that were left for us to follow. Amen. Not just the thou and the thou shalt nots, but the thou shalls as well. well you know, Jesus, you know a lot of people don't, uh, they won't come to church or come serve the Lord or, or give their life to Christ because they only uh, concentrate on the thou shalt not. Well, if I come to God, I can't do this. I can't do that. 
You can do whatever you want to do. Did you know that? You come to the Lord as you are. You give your life to him. You find out that those things that uh, you begin to think in your mind that you can't do, you don't want to do them anymore. I came to Jesus as I was, just a sinner, coming out, going from the, doing everything in the world. And I said, Lord, here's my life. I give it to you. I didn't come to him saying, well, Lord, I'm, I'm coming to you, but hey, you know something? I'm just going to keep this one uh, deal to myself. I kick open all the doors in my heart, but you know something? I'm just going to leave that one locked right there. Keep the key. But it's been shared that if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Hello. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, it says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. What? Do good to them that hate you. Hold on. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. I can't believe that's in the Bible. In the Bible, the rich young ruler, he thought that he was truly motivated by the mandates of Jesus Christ. After all, he kept all the commandments. He said, Lord, what must I do to, be, to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, told him all these things. To do. He said, I've been doing that since I was a young child from my youth. And Jesus knew his heart. He knew he was rich, had riches. Go sell everything and follow me. <laughs> mm hmm He was like, the Bible says he went away sorrowful because he had great rich riches. Can't believe this man, this prophet named Jesus Christ telling me to sell everything and follow him. Man, don't you know I got all these riches and whatever this man? But you know something? If he would have sold it all, <laughs> Jesus would have gave it all back to him. Yeah. You know that? Because you can't outgive God. Right. If you give it all to him, give it all to Jesus, and he will turn your sorrow into joy. When you give it all to him, he'll make sure. He'll make sure. Just like the potter. Takes all, chung, chung, take all that stuff off, off you with him. He'll make sure that, hey, he's making you out of a better person. Amen. This rich young ruler, he found that when asked to give up all his possessions, his privilege, if you will, he was not truly motivated by the instructions of Jesus after all. People are quick, put down here, they're quick to name the things that they don't do and the things that they do do. But when asked to give up their privilege, also, if we're in the hands of the master, we will be moved to make a difference. To make a difference. Like the master, we must be compassionate. We can't see need and ignore it. I, know, I guarantee somebody said, well, I got some needs. Uh, I, I, I can't help myself. He can help you. Amen. Yeah. Well, he ain't here. He may not be here in your life, but he's here in mine. Amen. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what the Bible says. When you call upon the name of Jesus, the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. When you call upon Jesus' name, do you know what happens? He stands still. He stands still. Oh, blind, blind Bartimaeus was there, the son of Timaeus. He was there begging on the wayside, asking people for money. Oh, Thomas, could you help me? Could you help me out? Then he was, well, I need, I need some. Can you help me out? And all of a sudden, the Bible said this man was blind. All of a sudden, he heard that Jesus was passing by. There was a crowd going by, uh, and no doubt he may have heard uh, people talking about Jesus. Uh, Jesus, Jesus. You know, Jesus, he did this for me. Jesus, Jesus. He heard that Jesus was passing by. <laughs> yeah. 
And he asked, what is this? What's, what does this mean? And somebody said, Jesus is passing by. And he began to probably think in his mind. The Bible didn't say this, but I'm just going to say this. He probably began to think in his mind because after uh, uh, what he did, I know he thought this. Because he began to cry to Jesus. Before he cried out, he probably thought in his mind, man, this is Jesus. This is the one who opened the, the uh, blinded eyes. This is the one uh, who, who fed the 3,000, the 5,000. This is the one that opened the, the unstopped ears to someone again couldn't hear. This is the one that began to heal uh, those poor people's legs that they begin to walk. He said, I can't see. And maybe he could do it for me. And the Bible says he began to cry out, no son of David, have mercy on me. I'm to take have mercy on me. And the Bible says uh, that as, as they begin to walk, uh, they, the people that was around Jesus, they told this man to hold his peace. Shut up, man. I'm pretty sure that's what they said. Shut up. Jesus ain't got time. They said hold his peace. That's what the Bible says, to hold your peace. That's just a nice way of saying shut up. Shut up, man. He ain't got time for you. But what did he do? He didn't just sit back and say, well, I, 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 nobody wants to help me. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. But the Bible says it must have been something in this man. must have been something in this man to cry out even more. No, son of David. I don't care what these people are saying. I need you. No, son of David. Have mercy on me. And as he began to cry out the second time. You see, you got to cry out two times. You may cry out the first time and you may say, well, you know, nobody's hearing me. But when that man began to cry out a second time, the Bible says that Jesus stood still. He stood still. The creator of the universe began to stand still in this individual's presence. And he told these individuals, and I believe without a shadow of a doubt, the people that told him to shut up, probably Jesus told him, hey, bring that guy over here. And he began to stand in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said, what will you want me to do for you? And this man did not mix bones. Huh? He didn't begin uh, to say, well, you know, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, no, he knew what he wanted. He said, Lord, I want to receive my sight. Yes. Yes. He probably thought in his mind, he did it for others. He can do it for me. And that's what I thought when I began to get saved. God can do it for others. He can do it for me. Huh? Yes. Who are you? He said, well, preacher, I'm better than you. Hey, you know something? You know, Jesus did it for others. He can do it for you. He did it for me. He did it for you. He can do it for others. He's not a respecter of persons. He won't do one thing for someone else and won't do and don't do it for somebody else. Jesus always said, according to your faith. Not the pastor's faith. Not the church's faith. But your faith. Be it done unto you. So that man began to say, Lord, I want to receive my sight. <laughs> you know something? He received his sight. He got what he asked for. No matter how bad it looks, don't throw in the towel. Don't stop believing. Ain't that a song preacher in the rock world? Who is that, bro? Journey. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Don't stop reaching out. Don't stop going forward. Don't stop beginning to stay in the same place. You know something you say, well, preacher, I'm in the same place I used to be. Why? Why are you staying in the same place? If you're not going forward, you're going backwards. You say, oh, I'm just, I'm just on, the, on, on, on the fence, just, just waiting for God to move. No, the Lord is waiting for you. He always waits for individuals. What does he want me to do? You know what God wants you to do. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's, when somebody says they don't know what God wants them to do, they know exactly what he wants them to do. They're just afraid to do it. That fear mechanism begins to pop up in their mind. They begin to think, well, if I did this, this is going to happen to me. Amen. Jump out of that comfort zone. There's some people that were here uh, just recently, we were uh, preaching about the Jabez prayer. We begin to say, Lord, expand my borders. <laughs> and the person begin to share, you know, uh, this was happening in my life and this was happening in my life. And I begin to just uh, pray a small prayer. 
they, well, Lord, you, you know, if you could do, you could just do the small thing for me. God, you just know that the Lord, he doesn't want to do small things for you. He wants to do gigantic things for you. So this person began to pray, and yes, the Lord did move on a small scale because it's according to their faith. But then one, one person began to share with this individual, why don't you pray to ask God to expand your borders? They expanded wide. And they did. And God came through. Just like Jabez. And the Lord blessed Jabez with all that he asked for. He began to expand his borders. What are you able to believe the Lord for? Ask God to expand your borders. Amen. Don't begin to think in your mind that, oh, you know, I don't know if he can do it for me. He can do it for you. He can save. He can fill with the Holy Ghost. And he can even give you a job. Just put that in there just for reference. He can give you a new car. You got, But you got to make the payments. You can be shouting on that. God bless you with a new car. But that, hey, what comes with that, it comes to payments. He can bless you with a new house, but you got to make payments and insurance payment on that. Man, preacher. We must be flexible or bendable in the potter's hands. We could be remolded. We can be renewed. There's one other ray of hope that shines through and that is Jeremiah chapter 18 and verse 4. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make, to make it. That is, the potter does not fashion a vessel to our liking. Okay? He doesn't do it for my liking. Not even to your liking. Well, I'll go to church to see what's going to go, what's going to go on in my life. Well, I'm going to go, I'm going to do this. Put, you know, you putting your own plans and expect to put God in there like, okay, I'll go to church once in a while. God knows what I'm doing. Yeah, he does know what you're doing. <laughs> he does know what you're doing. Oh, I'll go to church. I'll do this. I'll go to church once in a while and whatever. Well, you know, I got to go to school. I need this job. And then and we get, God blesses and whatever this, that. You know, some of the things that you get blessed with, did you know, if it takes you from the work of God, is it really a blessing from God? I got this job, but I'm working seven days a week. But God's blessing me, though. Really? The Lord's going to bless you to take you out from his will? Out of the work, uh, out of his house? Okay? Think about it now. I don't know what you're talking about, Preacher. Yes, I do. I've been there. <laughs> but I have to make decisions. I have to make decisions. When you give your life to God, you got to make decisions to put Him first. And when you put Him, I'm going to say it. Say it, brother. I'm going to say it, brother. When you put the Lord first, it's going to go against the world. It's going to go against what the world, the world's uh, way, or uh, the world's economics. Hey, you know, we're here seven days a week. Well, you know, I go to church on Sunday. You need another job. If you work here, you got to work here. Oh, yeah, I know, God, you know I need a job. Lord, you know I need a job. God, I need a job, God. Okay, I'm going to take the job. I'm going to take the job. God. God, work it out. Work it out. You better work it out before you get the job. <laughs> Sir, I do. I'm a good worker. Look at my references here. Um, such and such. Hey, I just need to go to church on Sundays. I work on Sunday night. Amen. Amen. You know, if you get, if you just tell, if they work it out, you work on, if you don't work on Sunday morning, I guarantee you the Lord will work out. He'll work out all the difference you want to be in church. Amen. But you got to ask. Yes. You got to ask. You can't stay, you can't be like one of those deals, one of those deals like at a, a, a car dealership. Whatever. Yeah, you can work here, but you got to work on Sunday. That's all right. Yeah, I can do that. I can do whatever you say. And then walk out and say you're blessed of God. Then nobody see. Pastor, where you at? I'm working. 
God bless me a new job. You sure about that? Okay, forget it. They said the town church I want to go to. I want to church, go to a church where it says, yeah, God will bless you with a job, whatever it is. Just come to church once in a while. You'll stop going to church altogether. Because it'll always be about money. I said, well, how do you know about that? All of us got to go through the same thing. We got to get over that money hump. Hello? <laughs> we got to get over that. That that It's not even, I ain't going to say it's even greed for money, but we got to get over that, uh, that uh, belief that God can take care of us. You know, some people, they can't get over, they can't get over the money hump of, of giving tithe. Oh, if you're talking about money now, I got to get out of here. <laughs> Let you know, your pastor. No, it, it, you know everything you do for the Lord is by faith. I'm, I'm preaching here this morning by faith. It took faith to get you to this house of God this morning. It takes faith for you to do anything in this world, and it definitely takes faith to give to the Lord. It does. It takes faith, but people do not know. When you give, the Lord will open the windows of heaven. <laughs> he said, well, how big is God's windows? <laughs> They're bigger than his windows in this place. The windows of heaven. Think about it now. Look up. The windows. Hey, angels, open those windows up. Got about two trillion angels. Woo! <laughs> Open those windows. The Bible said they open the windows of heaven and they pour out a blessing that you cannot, you can't even receive it. So what are you saying, preacher? All you have to do is have faith in the Lord. But you know something? When we don't give, I'm telling you, God is it. When we do give, he pushes away the devourer. He pushes away the devourer. What do you mean, preacher? <laughs> because when we don't give what's rightfully his, the devourer will come and take it. I shared, shared that before. Your car may be messing up, whatever this not. He said, man, I got, got to get my car fixed. How much does it cost? It costs the exact same amount of money that you should have given. You paid your tithe with. I don't believe that. Try it. Try it. And then this message will come back into your remembrance. Okay. I know I was supposed to give that to the house of God, but and then God, remember, something happened whatever this night, and all of a sudden, how much is it? And it'd be the exact same amount of money that you should have gave. And it come back. Remember that time I told you to give it? You didn't want to give it? Now what are you doing with it? And it'd even be extra. <laughs> I'll oh, preach, you just want my money. Go ahead and try it. I've learned the hard way. That's why I'm not afraid to share this. Don't give, don't give. Oh, yeah, keep it all to yourself. Oh, God, you know, you don't know my needs. I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, God, I like it. That's why you're having problems. Man, I don't even like to preach like this. That's why things are going on in your life. You can't make it. You're sick all the time and things. Because you don't give. Help me. Give. Just give God what's rightfully his. That's all you got to do. Don't put an excuse in there. Because the devil will get me anyway. Help me, Jesus. He doesn't do it for my liking or even your liking. But that which seems good to the potter. So he made again, it again, another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. The vessel that is formed pleases the potter. And we must remember that the potter uses what we might throw away. What we might consider worthless, ugly, useless, unwanted. The potter finds worth. No wonder the apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels 
that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. This treasure in earthen vessels, this thing right here, made of dirt. What kind of God do we serve? He created mankind out of the, the dust. It didn't say the dirt of the ground. It said the dust of the ground. Think about it. Just kick, just kiss some dirt up. God made us out of the dust that comes out of it. <laughs> kind of man, this man is <laughs> the dust of the ground. It said that as He created mankind out of the dust of the ground, He began to breathe into man's nostrils the breath of life. The Bible says man became a living soul. Only God can give us life. Only the Lord of heaven can give life to an individual. We may think that we're living. Uh, we may think that we're living when we have all the money that we need. I got a good job. I got all this stuff. But we ain't even living if Jesus is not there. It takes more than finances. I had to learn that the hard way. You give all the money in the bank, everything that you desire. But if Jesus is not where he belongs in your life, you'll live a miserable life. Now think about it now. Think about it. You know, you see a lot of rich people in this world. Some people, some of the richest people in the world, they're giving all of their finances away. 99% of it. Just giving it away when they die. Because they know <laughs> yeah, they can't take it with them, but they know what the word of God says. Amen. It's hard for a rich man to get into it. So they're giving everything away. I don't even know if they're serving God, but they do know that that's in the word of God. Amen. So they, they may think in their mind that if I give all this away, maybe the Lord will have mercy upon me. I don't know. But I thought about that. Why are they giving all their finances away like that? Because that's what the Bible says. It's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. As I reflected upon this message in a personal way, I looked back, I looked back and said to myself, yeah, I messed up a lot. I failed the Lord many times, but you know something? I'm still on the potter's wheel. I'm still in his hands. What about you? What about you? Are you in the potter's hands? Are you motivated by God's instructions? Are you moved by the things that would move the master? Moved to make a difference. You know, as God's people, we are called to issue a prophetic word. I'm not a preacher, preacher. You preach, if you, even if you give someone a church card, you're giving them a prophetic word. You're telling them, hey, Jesus is coming back. You got to make a decision. No, 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 thank you. I don't need that. You may not need church, but you need Jesus. We're called to issue a prophetic word to make an unpopular stance. Okay? To endure the pressures hurled Upon you. Either you say yes or you know. It's up to you. We are today's Jeremiah's. We may not be able to make sure that our government is in the master's hands locally or state or nationally, but we can make sure that we are on the master uh, wheel or the mat in the master's hands. To make sure that we are in the master's hands. Together, all of us can make a difference. Together we can make a difference. If we are willing to stay in the master's hand, that's what it all boils down to. Are you willing to do it? Are you willing? It takes a willing heart, a willing mind. And most of all, it takes a made up mind. That's in everything you do. I'm closing. It takes a made-up mind to be successful in anything you do. Not wavering, not going back and forth. You want, you want a great relationship? Make up your mind to have one. So why are you and Sister Wall has been together all the time? We made up our mind. We're going to be to death do us part. 
That's right. We made up our mind to do that. Amen. Don't y'all have problems? Yes, we have sometimes um, intense moments of fellowship. Sometimes things, we don't look the same way, eye to eye. But you know something? We're going to make it to heaven. Amen. We're going to help each other get to those pearly gates. Amen. To those streets of gold. Yeah. We're going to help each other. Why? Because we've made up our mind. Yeah. And that's what people got to do. Make up your mind. Yeah. We used to sing this song. You can call it. Hey, bro, you can call him back. We used to sing this song a long time ago. While there's still time, make up your mind. You can't be happy living on the borderline. If you only knew God's plan for you, you wouldn't wait or hesitate while there's still time. When I heard that song sung, I began to just uh, put place it in my heart and I begin to take those words to heart. While there's still time, make up your mind. You can't be high, be living on the borderline. If you only knew God's plan for you, you wouldn't wait or hesitate while there's still time. And then we're going to say, tomorrow's, tomorrow is just on credit. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. You may be gone in a moment when it's your time to die. We're not promised tomorrow. God has given us today to make up our mind while there's still time. Let's all bow our heads this morning. Reverence to the Lord this morning. As we read one more time our text. <laughs> and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again. Another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. We're all, we're here this morning, we're all on the potter's wheel. He's molding us. He's shaping us. He's redoing our whole life over. Like they have the makeover with the makeup and this and that. God is making over our inward man or woman. And he's making it to his pleasure. Not our liking, right. not what others want, but to his liking. Yeah. He makes each one of us different. Yeah. And he constantly places us on that potter. Brother, put that last uh, picture up there, brother, sir. Take me, use me, mold me. I give my life to the yeah. potter's hand. You see that picture up here this morning? All, all the clay, all the clay is coming off that pot onto the potter's hands. If we're in the pot, we're on that potter's wheel, he begins to shape and mold us. Where is it going, preacher? He takes it all in his hands. He puts it all in his hands. We got, but we have to be in his hands to do it. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, Lord, this morning. To preach your word. Yes, yes. God, we ask this morning, God, we have shared what you want us to share. We did exactly what you wanted us to do. We were not afraid. Amen. And I ask God this morning by your spirit that you do that which I can't do. And that is to draw your people, the souls that you have created, to a closer walk with you. You said if we draw near to you, that you'll draw near to us help us to do just that this morning the altars are open this morning I'm not even asking you to come to the altar do what the Lord has laid upon your heart this morning Hallelujah. Jesus said come all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest take my yoke upon you 
for his yoke is easy and my burden is light seek the face of the Lord this morning if you desire prayer step out that seat step out your pew come stand kneel this altar this morning and give your heart to the Lord this morning it's up to you this morning Lord help us help us all this morning God to stay the potter's will to come rest thank you Jesus and mercy heard my plea Lord you found me and you heal me and you call me from the grave you gave me real love I thank you Jesus you washed my sins away oh now I'm living like I'm forgiven and you came What your mercy did for me. You gave me beauty for my guilty state. And now I'm living and day by day by your grace. So excuse me if I can't, I can't contain my praise. Cause I know Standing at this altar this morning. Why don't you step up your hand? Don't be ashamed. Just step up your hands this morning and just say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing my prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for not only hearing my prayer, but answering my prayer. I believe you this morning. I believe your word. And I believe, Lord, that you are reworking me, reworking all of us on your will this morning in Jesus name in the precious name of Jesus brother Joshua Rito could you close in prayer this morning
Yes, Lord. God, if there be anything in there that you don't like, God, help us. Be yes, Lord. Help us be molded in that perfect image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch over us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. God bless you as I pray. Remember, Hallelujah. pray for one another. Yes, God bless you. hallelujah.